Hello everyone, how are you today? Today we'll be looking at the lookup, okay? And then what is lookup? A lookup formula essentially returns a value from a table by looking up another related value, okay? As you can see on the screen here, we do have two tables here, okay? We can look up values from here and then um, get it into here this point this empty um, columns here in the first table and we can do the same thing um, get information from another worksheet okay and um, transfer it into this other worksheet okay so basically that is how the lookup works and then there are th two kinds of lookup the vlookup and the hlookup we'll be using the vlookup for this um, today's exercise Okay, so um, the difference between the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP is that the VLOOKUP works vertically. Okay, vertically is um, by column wise like that. And the HLOOKUP um, works horizontally by row, works row by row like that. So we'll be using the VLOOKUP function for this exercise. Now, before we start, you would see down here that we have um, this worksheet. It's named Sheet 1. We're going to change it to the name called Invoices. So I'll just double click on that uh, sheet and type in Invoices. Right. And then there's another worksheet here named um, we're going to call this accounts. So I, I would double click on this and type accounts. Okay, so that's how to rename worksheets. Now we'll go back to the invoices. Like I did say, I could decide to get my information from the accounts um, worksheets, or I can just get this information from here. So what I have done is I do have this table that is here is the same thing that is there okay so I can I'll just show you how that we do have two columns here so I could just use um, one of the columns to illustrate to you how you can um, navigate around that if you want to get um, information from another worksheet okay so as you can see on this table, when we want to use the VLOOKUP function, all right, it essentially, essentially means you um, filling up this empty cells, okay, getting the information from any table. It doesn't matter where it, it is located in another worksheet or it is in the same worksheet, okay. Now, basically, sometimes people will just copy and paste the information but we will use the VLOOKUP. How do we do that? We will look at this table. Okay, this table does have um, the column headings there. You would see date, product, other, account number, customer name, and the address. These are empty. So, and then when you look at the second table down here, okay you would notice that the information in this columns that are empty we can find them here like the account name you'll see it's there accounts name is here and the address it's also here how do we know we can get this from this point because the account number that we have in this column aligns with the account number here okay now to use the VLOOKUP you would need to use a lookup value okay that is unique in this particular table to get the information from the table that you want um, you want to get it from now in this particular table what we have here is the account number this is one column that is unique in this particular table so it is called the lookup value so when you're using you want to use um, VLOOKUP, you need to know what the lookup value is all about in that table. What are you going to use as your lookup value? Usually, 
a column that is unique now sometimes um, a question can tell you use a certain column as your lookup value so that makes it easy then you just go ahead and use that otherwise you would have to figure it out yourself because um, to figure that out is look for the column that is unique in that um, table and use it as your lookup value now let's use the vlookup in the customer column to get the information for the customer using account number as our lookup value so first you need to go to get your vlookup function you can click here in sector function so if i click on that part of the um, function dialog box would appear so let's i'm going to move this a little bit okay now if you look here um, it says or select a category so from here most recently used sometimes you might come to this point depending on the computer that you're using all right so these are some of the most recent functions i have used so it makes it easy for me to just see my vlookup there and then click on it click ok to insect that all right otherwise um, let me close this otherwise you can just go through the formulas tab okay and you will see look up and references click on the more arrow then scroll through to look for your vlookup okay so that's your vlookup function you click on that so this is what comes out right now you pay attention to this explanation because it's going to help you understand how to walk through this now, if you see here is lookup value, like I explained in the table, you must have a lookup value, usually something, the column that is unique that would allow you to fetch the information that you need from another table. So in this case, the lookup value here would be the account number. So I'll click on the account um, number column. And if you look at that box there, we have uh, the C2 inserted in the box. Now, table area box, I'll click inside there. What does that mean? It simply means from where do you want to get this information from? Which table do you want to get your information from? Now, like mm -hmm. I said, you can get your information from another worksheet or from a table that is still within the worksheet that you're working from now in this case we have this table here so i'll come here and select the entire table right as you can see now sometimes um you'll be told the range of the table that you need to select okay now if you look into this table area box you would see that it is a13 column c18 all right so that is the table range you'll be told the range to choose as your table area okay or the worksheet where you need to use get your table from okay so i've selected that as a table array now the column index all right now sometimes before i click in this column index I like to get what I want first before clicking on that column index. Now the column index simply refers to the table here where you're getting your information from. Now the index, if you look at this Excel, we have column A, column B, column C, D, E, and so forth. Now, for VLOOKUP, this column index number, A becomes 1. So, we call this column A, we call this 1, 2, 3, like so. Now, in this table where we're getting this information from, this is, we call this 1 because it falls under column, um, it, it falls under A. We'll start counting from the starting of that table. So, this is 1 which is the column two. Remember what we're trying to get is the customer name. Now two, which is a column two, 
this is where the customer name falls in so the column index number becomes two now that is from the table array from the table array this is where we got it from we count the columns and one two three now the point where the column that has the information that you want that is where you pick that number from okay so i'll click in the last um, box there which is um range lookup okay range lookup there is um two values that can go into this point which is true or false okay so we always use false because if you look through here okay range lookup explains exactly what it is about and it says here um, to find the exact match you should insert false find an exact match remember we want to get the exact match for the account number at 1023 so we put false so most of the time you will type in false in this point called range lookup because you always want to get the exact information from another table so once you do that and it's correct if you look by the right hand side here you would see that um, it has already um, extracted the name of the customer see here is coffee so it's extracted that if we look at this table where we have 1023 the name of the customer is coffee so in the table where we want to fill up 1023 customer name here is going to insect coffee for us so I'll, go, I'll just go ahead and click OK. All right. So um, just like I said, I already checked that this is correct. 1023 here is Kathy. 1023 here is Kathy as well. So once you're sure that what you have done is correct, you hold down the fill handle, copy the formula to the rest of the cells. I would, uh, we will always do so. I want to fill, click hold the fill handle and copy down. All right. So what happened? <laughs> so you can see we have some um, not applicable or not available here. Now this means that there is an error. When you find things like this, try to find if the information is in that table. So let's try to check. This is account number 2002. And if you look here, account number 2002 has the name Makalima, okay, which means we have that information in this table, but here it gives us wrong information. So what you do is just clean up everything and make this uh, formula absolute. Make it absolute. Remember, when you try to copy formula down and you have some error information, try to make your formula absolute so i'm going to click on the first cell there now go to the formula bar okay so if i come to the formula bar here what i will have to do is to make the formula absolute now from here Okay, so if you look here, I have made the formula absolute. Now, to make the formula absolute, you apply a dollar sign before and after the column heading, before and after the column letter. So I added the dollar sign before the column letter and after the column letter. Then I went to this point where I have before the column letter and after the column letter so once that is done i can now come here click hold and auto fill so if i now check 2002 i will see makalimia 2000 and trc makalima so randomly 
the information is correct okay so that is how to do your VLOOKUP now in this particular column okay I want to show you that you can get information from another um, worksheet okay now this is an illustration to show you you can get information from the same worksheet from another table and you can do the same thing now let's we'll be getting the information for addresses even though we have it here but i'm going to illustrate using another worksheet because we have the same table in this worksheet here okay now let's use vlookup to fill up this column we want to get the customer name kathy okay we we want to get the address and put it in the address column so what do we do like i said you either come to the insect function all right so get your um vlookup v look function all right now if you come to this point um all right so you can see the vlookup is no longer here what we have here is lookup and reference lookup and reference which is fine so you just scroll through to look for your vlookup all right so that is it there vlookup so you just click and you click ok you see we still have that same um, function argument dialog box would appear all right like we did explain initially so i'll move this a little bit upwards lookup value simply means what is that value or what yes what is that value that you want to use to retrieve the information that you want from another source or from another table doesn't matter where the table is located in your workbook okay now that your lookup value must come from the table that you are using that you want to complete um, you want to get information from so we will still use the account number so i'll click in that um, that cell to get the lookup value which is unique in that table now table array again i'm going to explain where are you going to get this information that you want now the information that we are looking for is the address of the customers so which table do you want to get it from like i explained the table is in another worksheet so let's get it so what do i do i have to go to this worksheet first i'll click in that box now click in the worksheet where i want to get the table from uh, the information from which is accounts worksheets i would click on that now click on my argument function argument box and move it a little bit now all i need to do is select the entire table just like we did before select the entire table that's all now in the section where we have column index number column index number okay like i said in um, column index number is where in which column does that information lie okay where, which column do you have that information stored in now if you can't remember we're getting an, the address you must have all this in mind we want to ins uh, extract the customer address now it is in the column c now you count one two three so the address is in column c so that is three number three that is when you will click the box because once you click the box it transfers you into the original worksheet where you want to fill in the information so i'm going to click and you see it takes me back to the original worksheet so here i will type in three because that's where the information is stored in the table now range lookup like i said always put in false because false gets you the exact information that's what it says here find exact match equal to false okay false gives you the exact information that you're looking for 
now that's all we want if you look by the right hand side in the um, argument function argument dialog box you see that the information that we're looking for is already extracted which is okay there's no invalid uh, information so i'll click okay Okay, now if you look here, you can now see that we have the information. So just extend um, the width of that column by double clicking the E beside the column E, that point, and you will have that column extended. Right, now let's see if this is correct. Um, Kafi's address is 44 dollars. That's what we have there. Remember, it is the same thing from here. So if we look at Kafi, this information is correct. So if we want to do that in the table where we got it from, where's Kafi? And this information is correct for the Fort Dodd Street, Johannesburg, and that. So back to the invoices worksheet, this is correct. So what we would now do is to copy the um, the formula down to the rest of the cells. So let's click hold and copy down. Again, you see the same thing. So it means we'll have to make the formula absolute. So I'm going to clean up everything. All right, click in the first cell because that's the one we, we are sure of. Click the first cell. Now, if you go to that um, formula bar, you see where the information was extracted, which is column A1. That is A1. It, it tells the sheet, the worksheet, which is account. It says A1 column C6. That's where the table lies. So you insert dollar sign before the column letter A and after the column letter A. Now you come to columns, um, the C, insert the dollar sign before and after the column letter, as you can see over there, and then press the enter key. Now the, the dollar sign that you inserted is to hold the formula down so that when you copy this formula to the rest of the cells, it would not change. All right. So I'm going to click hold and copy the formula down to the next rest of the cells. So that is correct. So let's just randomly to see if this is right by the address. So we have Maka, Makalima has the address 28 Sali. So let's see Makalima, so 28 Sali, which is correct. So the same thing Makalima if we come here, that is correct over there, okay? So um, from using VLOOKUP, you can get information from any table. It doesn't matter where it is located. If it is located within the same worksheet, it doesn't matter where you would. You already see how we did that to extract the information. If it is located in another worksheet, you have also seen an example on how to get your information. And when you're trying to copy this down to the rest of the cells, and if you have an error, it is important you go and make that formula absolute. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter how large your data set is. Okay. You must just follow the simple step. The same step. It doesn't change. It doesn't matter how small or large your data set um, is. Okay. All right. So that is it for the first exercise. We'll go into the next exercise so you can see how you would um, work with the name range. Okay, so here it is. This is another exercise, the second exercise. And in this exercise, you can see we have sheet one here and we have sheet two. All right, so we'll be working with the name range in the lookup. Okay, what is naming a range? Now, a name can be given to a range of cells. Okay, the name can be used instead of the cell address in a formula. Okay, now it is 
I'm going to show you how that works. But as you can see here, let me just explain what you you can see over here so you understand. Now, this is a faculty called EMS Faculty Part-Time Timetable. It's a, it's a timetable, right? It's for first year as now, this is Monday timetable and the periods, okay? Right. You would see that the period is period one to four, and these are the subject codes. The name of the lecturer and the column here is empty. Their office, which is room number empty, email address empty, telephone number empty. So we'll be filling up all of that empty columns. Now, for this other, this is also a table, separate table, right? Okay, but this one is still part-time. This is Tuesday timetable, all right? Period 1 to 4, subject code. These are the subject code, and we have column this. These columns are empty, which is the name of the lecturer, the room, their office number, email address, and telephone number. So we'll see how we can complete this. Once I'm able to complete the first one, it is the same thing that would happen in this other one. Now, before we start, let us format this particular exercise so it looks nice and um, understandable. Okay, so we're going to um, merge and center the first, all right, the heading over the exercise we'll do that remember the exercise stopped at column f so we'll merge and center over the exercise so i click hold drag to column f now before i do that i'm going to widen these columns before i do merge and center widen the columns all right so click hold drag to column F, go to Home tab, Alignment Group, choose, click the more arrow and choose Merge and Center. Then I want to change the, the font size. Okay. Maybe increase the font size a bit to 12. Okay. Now in row, I'm going to do the same thing for row 2 and row 3. So merge and center across the exercise. The right home tab, alignment group, click the more arrow and choose merge and center. In this case, we'll make this bold. Now I'll do the same thing for row three, merge and center across the exercise. Go to home tab, um, make it bold and go to alignment group. Click the more arrow, choose merge and center. Now go to the column headings, make them bold, depending what your preference are or what you're told to do. All right. So there are different kinds of alignment we can apply to this. We can choose the alignment will make it all center aligned, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now I want to add a, a background color to the column headings. So we'll call that all column headings from row one to row four. Okay so it is now selected home tab um font group now that's where i get the background i can choose that let's choose that red ascent to lighter 80 percent so let's choose this one okay now let's apply the same thing to the tuesday okay All right, let's apply the same formatting to Tuesday. So I'll click code, merge across the exercise. All right, change the font type. That's what we have, font type there. Go to alignment group, click the more arrow, choose merge and center. Okay, come to the next one, merge and center across the exercise. Home tab, alignment group, alignment group, click the more arrow and choose merge and center. Let's make this bold. I'll do the same thing here. Home tab, alignment group, 
Twin Camel Arrow Merge and Center, make it bold. Then the column headings, we're going to make that bold as well. Now here, I'll select all the, the headings that everything. Now go to Home tab, Font Group. Again, I'll just click on that because I already applied it to the first one. So we use the same thing. Okay, now let's name this sheet one. Let's change the name to part-time timetable. Okay, so you double click on the sheet. Okay, worksheet there. And here I'm going to type in part-time. Timetable, I'll just call it TT, okay? Part-time timetable. So um, you'll be told what name to give to each work um, spreadsheet, worksheet or spreadsheet. So let's go to the sheet two. I'll click on sheet two. You see we have a table there. So I'm going to double click this and call this the academic info because if you look at it, it's all about the information about the lectures lecturers okay so I'll type in the academic info okay now we have part-time timetable and the academic information of the lectures okay now the next thing we want to do is to name this range to name this name the range remember i said we'll be looking at name range in vlookup now the name range center sometimes from here a1 to this point is e9 so we can say name the range a1 column e9 Okay, name the range A1 column E9 would say academics. So what that simply means is come to this, go to the worksheet academic info and name the range academics. Okay, so simply you are told to select the entire table. Okay, now to name the range, let's just extend this. To name the range, you must ensure that the exact spelling is what you have typed in. First, you select the entire table. Okay. Based on the range given to you, the cell range given to you. Instance, this is the cell range. And I have selected all of it. Now, here is called the name box. When we started Excel, I explained that this is a name box. Now, what you can see there is A1. Now, whatever thing you type in there, whatever name that you type in there replaces the A1. So that is where we're going to type in the word academics. So I'll double click there and type in academics. Okay, once you type that in, now press the enter key on your keyboard then it saves. Okay, you don't need to take off the highlight. Um, you leave it like so. Now go back to your part-time um, TT worksheet. Okay, so I click on that. Now let's use the VLOOKUP to fill up the empty columns. Remember what I say VLOOKUP is is to extract information from another source. It could be a table within the worksheet or a table that is in another worksheet. So in this exercise, we'll do that, extracting information from another worksheet, another worksheet in the um, academic info, okay, worksheet. So let's go and extract the information for lecturer, the room, the email address and telephone. Now, if you look here, remember I said if you want to use the VLOOKUP, you have to, you would have to have the lookup value. 
unluckily in this table this is the only lookup value that we have the only column here we have is the lookup value because it's unique okay so we'll be using the subject code as the lookup value to extract all the information that we want so first click in the cell now go to that insect function all right so we have enough space so i will move this around now when you come to this point you have the lookup and references which is okay scroll all the way through to find the v lookup this is it click and click ok now we have this lookup value we said subject code that's what we want to use to extract the information for lectures information okay all the academic information now table array where do you want to extract the information from that's what table array is and we want to extract the information from the worksheet called academic info so i'll go and click on that can you see i'll move this a little bit remember if you click here you must select everything must be selected okay so I'll click and select the entire table it doesn't matter how large that table is that is where you're getting it from and you see when you select that what you now see in the table array is academics because that was the name range or the name you gave to this range did you see that is what is there now column index number remember what we want to get the information we want to get is what lecturer's name now in this table you count one two lecturer's name are uh, the lecturer's name you would find in the column b now that is one two so the column index number is two now, before you click in that box, get the column index number. Otherwise, when you click and you're working between different worksheets, it's going to move. So I click here. You'll see it takes me back to the original worksheet where I'm completing the information. So here I'll put in two. Remember, I said always put false. So we'll type in false and false indicates we want to get the exact match. So that's what we have. Everything here is fine. No error. So we'll click OK. OK, so let's extend this column a little bit to accommodate the names. We might have to extend again so you can enter all the names. Now, this is correct. If I check the IPS 101, go to, to see IPS 101. This is D. Morrison. This is correct so I can go ahead and use my autofill copy this down and luckily you see we don't have to use the absolute you don't have to make the formula absolute okay you don't have to make the formula absolute so we're gonna do the same thing for the room number email and telephone so I'll click inside that point, go to this, to insert my VLOOKUP. Instead of scrolling all this to find VLOOKUP, I can come here and choose most recently used. So that makes it easy for me to have the VLOOKUP on top. So I'll select VLOOKUP, click OK. Lookup value is subject code. Table array, remember the table array is what? Academics. That was the name given to that range. So instead of me now going back to the worksheet called Academic Info to select that entire uh, table, I can just type in there Academics. Okay. And once you type that in, you will see it picks it up entirely from that um, worksheet called academic info so that is the reason 
why you named that range instead of going to that worksheet to select the entire table. So academics, it picked it up. And if you want to do this, it's important that you type the right word correctly. The spellings must be correct. Upper cases must be the same way you have named that range. Okay. Okay, now the column index number, remember we're getting it from the range academics. I don't have that. It still means I would have to go to that click. I would need to come here and get it. The room number is what? Um, we're trying to get room number. This is one, two, and three. Room number here will be three, but remember it is column index number. I would have to take off what is that and type in three. So I would just even advise that you always just go to that point and select the entire table. Again, here I did say you should always put false. Okay, so by the right hand side, everything is correct. So click them all, uh, click OK. So Demorison, it says L10 as the office will go to academic info worksheet and see D Morrison L10. So this is correct. We'll go back to part-time timetable and click this autofill. That is correct. So we don't need to um, put that absolute. So it's fine. You can randomly check it to see if this, um, this name aligns with the room number in this worksheet, okay? So that's how you check the integrity. So I'm going to do that for the next columns. So you pick that up. So go to this point, insect function. The more you practice, the more you do this, the more it is easy for you to understand and get uh, the skill of using the lookup. So I'll select the VLOOKUP, click the more, the OK. Lookup value is subject code. Table array, I like to go to this point so I would easily get the column index number. Okay, we're getting the email, so I click that point, select the entire table. All right, I hope you understand what happened here. I did not move to this point. So it's important that before you do anything, you need to know where you have clicked. Okay, so I'll close everything here and start all over. You need to know what you are doing, otherwise when you make a mistake, you wouldn't understand. So I click back on that point, click there, choose VLOOKUP, click OK. Now lookup value is subject code. Now table array, what I did, I did not click that point. It was still on the lookup value. So table array, I'm getting it from the academic info worksheet. So I'll click and select the entire table. When I select the entire table, you would see what is written there is academics because that was the name we gave to the range. Okay. Now column index number, we want to get the email of the lecturer. Email is located in column D, which is number four. One, two, three, four. So that's what you put there, four. Like I said, before you click on that column index number, ensure that you already got the number. Otherwise, when you click, it moves you to the next worksheet. Now I said always type in the false because it is equal to the exact match. Look down here, Morrison D, and that's the email address. It is fine. We we'll click OK. Let's extend that so the email is showing clearly. All right, that is correct. So I can now click and copy the formula down. So in this case, we do not have any errors, which is fine. We do the same thing again for this one. Go to this insect function, you click, 
you choose the VLOOKUP, you click OK. And we say lookup value, we continue to use the subject code. Table array, you click in the table, that box. We're getting the information from the academic worksheet. So I'll click on that point and select the table itself. Okay, you would see that there is a mistake. So I'll clean, clean up that. Select the entire table. The exact table. Don't add any empty um, cells. So that inserts um, the name range there. Academics. Column index number. Before I click in that box, we want to get the telephone number of the lecturers. So that is in column E, which is five. One, two, three, four, five. That is it. So I'll click there and type in five. If you notice, once I click, it took me straight back to the worksheet part-time TT. Range lookup. I'm going to type in there, false. Okay, range lookup is false, and then I'll click OK. Everything here is correct. If it wasn't, it's going to show some sign like error or invalid, and you will know you have not done it correctly. You can start all over again and ensure that you select the right cell range. So I'll click OK. Now, this is correct. I'll click hold and copy the formula down. That is all. Okay. So you would see, I won't go on and on to do this. This would be the same thing. Okay. It's going to be the same thing if I want to complete the timetable for Tuesday, because that's what it means. We'll be using the subject uh, code here as a lookup value. I'll go over and over to fill up this using the same method I have done here. So you can see what it means to use name range. You will select this portion of table and name it. This you can do if you're doing your own thing, working in an organization anywhere. You can select group of cells and put, give it a name. Just like we, we have done, you can select entire table and give it a name.